on today's show, Sean Belagian joins us. We have rock music from Rolling Blue. We get into sports, some movie reviews, and we get all into that right now on Season 2 of the AVG Podcast. Jacob's research is awful. Picking dodgeball players, I'm picking the kids that can throw the ball. Uh, I just okay. blew LeBron. I don't care what team. Uh, okay. No, no, it's okay. No, they did a broadcast this morning and had like one viewer. Good job, guys. Uh, <laughs> and that was me again. Sure. Did we ever see a cover of Eddie Murphy's Party All the Time? But this is the Lions we're talking about. So anything's possible. Kicker, long snapper. <laughs> Nobody else that's, matters, right, Darren? <laughs> no, that's me. That's me. It's top five time. Top five. Today. five. Wow, did you really say that this congeniality is better than the blind side? I, I say he dressed like a hooker. This is at a diner. You know, show some respect, show some class, and just don't be a bunch of dummies. See, I think there are other better gangster movies than Scarface. For God's sakes, look at your goddamn boots. For God's <laughs> sakes, it's time to grow roots. That's right, we are back for season two of the ADG podcast. I know you missed us because we have missed you. What's if, if you're not yes, if you're not familiar with the AG podcast, my name is Darren. And I'm Jacob. And we are your hosts for the ADG podcast. And if this is your first time tuning into the ADG podcast, buckle up. We have a little bit of everything for you uh, coming up this season. We got some new stuff. We got some of the old favorites like Jake's rants uh, coming up this year. Uh, but Jake, it's great to be back. It is great to be back. And today we have a Detroit show. Full yes. out. It's yes. all about the D. It's all about but D. Let's let's Darren start this off. What do we got in sports? Oh, it's been uh quite the summer with sports. Uh it's kind of been quiet the summer uh when it comes to sports. Obviously, this is like the dead zone time in sports. Obviously, there's baseball still going around and the Tigers are still on pace to lose over 120 games. So that's right, nobody go, cares. Eat them up, Tigers, eat them up. <laughs> They're shit. Uh, yeah. But uh, but the but, but the Tigers did uh, uh, something positive for me uh, uh, this summer. We'll get to later when we talk about our stories from our uh, time off. We got some good stuff. Uh, obviously, everyone who's anyone is hyped about football season, and I know the Lions are uh, kind of struggling in the off in the preseason right now. They're zero three, but you know I really don't put that much weight into preseason football. I can't say Obviously, it. neither I, do the Lions. No, yeah, they <laughs> hate it just as much. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we're going to have uh, a special guest, a guy who knows about the Detroit Lions more than me and Jake. I know it's hard oh, to believe, yes. but yeah, yeah. Uh, Sean Belegian will be joining us soon shortly. on that talk, yeah, shortly about that. And uh, when it comes to other sports, obviously, this week is the kickoff to the college football season, Jake. I'm excited. Exactly. Michigan and Michigan State get ready to start their season. It's going to be a great time. I think Michigan opens up at home against Middle Tennessee State. I believe that's, that's, I believe that's their first game. On Saturday. And, yep. Yeah. And if they don't blow them out like 65 to nothing, that's sad. <laughs> so good luck to the maize and blue and good luck to the green and white on a on a good competitive college football season. I always love that, that, that feeling that football's in the air, Jake, you know, you know, that means fall is here, you know, the we- weather's changing, you know, me, mm-hmm. I, me, I'm a person. I love fall. And I love it's not football. Because, it, well, fall and football. There you go. It's not because my birthday falls in the fall, but you know, but it's, it, it's a great time. It's one of my favorite seasons of the year. Oh, it's it's fantastic! Exactly. It's college football. It's the NFL. Mm-hmm. It's football from now on until the <laughs> until end of January. February. I yeah, can't February, wait. Yeah, first yeah. first week of February. It'll be great. Pretty much, yeah. And and this year it's going to be different because uh, 2020, uh, when the NFL's done, they're going to be starting the XFL. Oh and, yeah, yeah. That's that kicks off too, and they have pyrotechnics. Exactly. They're going to be uh, running for the ball like a, a mad dash to decide a coin toss this year. I, I know. Think. That's weird, but oh. I'm excited to see what it looks like. I Hopefully, it's a better product than their first uh, attempt at, uh, mm. at football. I think it's more organized this time around. I think it's more organized. I think they got the right people in place, you know, and it's less, you know, sports entertainment than, than actual football, so... Yeah. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good. Um, 
a couple of little football notes that isn't Detroit related because we'll 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 soon be talking about Detroit a lot. Is uh, there's a lot of big name athletes that are on big name teams that haven't signed yet and are holding out. I look at Melvin Gordon and Ezekiel Elliott. Jake, would would this hurt the league if those two big star name players, uh, you know, pulled the Le'Veon Bell and didn't play at all that season? No, this not season? really. It's going to hurt their markets and their teams, but mm-hmm. not not really the NFL itself. The NFL itself is actually quite exciting this year, right? Because it's been uh, crazy on Anto- Antonio Brown nonsense with the helmet thing, and yeah, you know, all the teams are just. Year, they're ready. Everybody's ready to go this year. It just seems like everybody just wants to hit, you know, the first week hard and just get at it. I think everybody's over the Patriots, mm-hmm. and they just want to see who's next. But the Patriots look good, so I don't. Ah, know. The Patriots look good. The Patriots are gonna be different. No Gronk this year. He's retired, and he's from the looks of it, he looks happy. He really yeah, looks but, like a happy that's, guy. That's still a great team right now. Oh, no doubt about it. As long as Brady and Belichick are still at the helm, mm-hmm. they're contenders. No, yeah, no doubt about anywhere. it. Uh, a, a fun thing that I don't know if you, if you've been watching. I've been watching it, and I always enjoy it, is the Hard Knocks episodes of training camp with the Oakland Raiders. Oh, I have I not think, been watching it. It's been. I heard it's uh, been pretty good. It's been pretty good. John Gruden is just. He, he's awesome. He was built for this show, you know. <laughs> Obviously, you know? he's a he's a yeah. big media guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Anytime he he's in front of the camera, he, he wants that. Yeah, shit. exactly. He knows that persona that he's known for. Right. You know. You know. Knock on the table if you're with me. You know. That's what they do. <laughs> uh, and, and a big shout out. It was also great to see Luke Wilson getting some airtime on that show. He, he was talking about Windsor and the Ambassador Bridge, and he was on a boat with his dad, who uh, Mike Wilson, who was a uh, you know, who was, who was supporting him since day one. So that's great to see that father son moment there. But yeah, when it comes down to uh, everything else in sports, we'll, we'll get into the lions, but of course, you know, I think everyone's it's, it's that anticipation that football's here. Fantasy football is here. I know oh, yes. I, I have my draft on Friday, so I'm super excited about that. Awesome. And I'm not doing one this year, by the way. You're not doing one this year? No, that's prob- too busy. That's probably why. It's, it, it, it just consumes your entire Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I've it's, been really good uh, yeah. uh, with everything. Always had like two or three teams. This year, there's going to be none. Oh, wow. We don't have time for that for some reason. But, no. but that's why we're going to be doing this, so I can still keep track of what's going on and still watch I, the I, games. I, yeah, so if if I'm happy and, and chipper on, on weeks we, we do record, you know why. Because I wanted fantasy that week. If, uh, I'm, if I'm an asshole and miserable. You'll know why. Well, Darren, I got a question for you. With fantasy, Shoot. what when you do your fantasy teams, yes, yes, do you get yourself to pay attention more to other games like besides I the do. lines? I, I know, do. right? I, do. I don't have time I'm for that right now. I'm constantly uh, either web surfing or channel surfing or constantly checking the ticker to see, okay, this team scored. Who scored? Did one of my guys get a point? Get a, get a right. score there? And I'm all and, and I, I'm I I watch. The teams that my opponent that week is playing because I want to see like did he oh oh he scored I hope he didn't score you know so it's like double duty but yeah. in the end fantasy football it's all luck you know it's pretty much all luck your players if, if if you're lucky to pick the right players at the right time and injuries happen or if if the game is a blowout and you are and and you have a running back guess what they're not going to be running the ball when they're down twenty four points. They're going to be thrown. Exactly. So, right. yeah, it's a crapshoot, but, you know, it's fun. Uh, it's all about the it's all about the type of league that you're in and the people that you're in the league with. I'm, I'm in a league. I'm just in one league. I, I just own one team uh, with a bunch of my cousins. We've done this for the last seven or seven or ten years. Same guys. We have we have we have a, one of those big belts that you know like wrestlers have a championship it's, belt a championship <laughs> yeah it's it, it's right. pretty cool it's pretty cool so yeah no it's it's a great time uh, so good luck to all those fantasy football uh, uh, teams out there I hope you win your league uh, Sean Belegian who will be joining us in, in a bit uh, is a big fantasy football guy so yes, I know yes, I'm, yes. I know I'm going to be asking him all fantasy football <laughs> I, I need a couple sleepers and a couple breakout players from, right. from him so hopefully he'll he'll help me out with that I kept QB because you know Andrew Luck is gone I Good know luck. I couldn't believe that I just couldn't believe that it, like yeah. 29 years old and you just have to walk away from the game because mm-hmm. mentally you just can't do it anymore 
mentally, physically, how many injuries can you have? You know, wow. you need to. Your body needs to recover. Exactly. The off season, you need and to. You know, he'll what, be Jay? back though. I'm thinking he'll be back. You, you think he's gonna? You think he's gonna take I a year so. off and yeah. just, you know, mentally recover from yeah. all this? Recover, settle down, find himself, and he's like, you know what? I, I I can do this for a couple more years, and he'll come back. Yeah. Well, you have that, and then you see someone like Brady, who's he wants to play until he's 45, and he and he just signed a, a, a two year extension. Yeah, he'll play. So, I know. I, I, Brady's crazy, so. Yeah, uh, he's, he's insane. He's, his his mentality is 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 unlike anyone else's. Exactly. That's why he's the greatest. Yeah, I, I yeah, I can't disagree with you with that. You win six titles, you know. Yeah, you yep. deserve you, you, you have deserve to all the accolades you get. Uh, sure. So yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it for soccer this week. Uh, uh, soccer, wow, sports soccer. this week. I'm, uh, I, I got wish it was on the brain for something. You know, me, I me too. To, I'm channeling. Uh, I'm channeling. I'm channeling. I got excited there for a second. You said soccer. I'm, I'm like, where? I'm sorry, Jake. I'm like yeah. squirrel. Where? I know squirrel. What? 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 Uh, but no. Uh, coming up the next year is we have the Euros coming up. Oh, can't Can wait to fight. preview that in that's February be awesome. where all the matches come out. <laughs> Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll the have, European we'll have, brackets. We'll have yeah, we'll have a soccer expert on on the show. We'll be talking about that. Jake will be oh, in his glory. Man. I'll just be there and just taking notes. Oh man, pretty much. I mean, I'm drooling like hold the <laughs> <friend. laughs> oh, uh, he, he's he just has a big smile on his face. Yes. Oh, that's right. So that's it for sports, Jake. All right. So while we have time, and uh, since we just finished sports, might as well get into and. Uh, Talk to our special guest. Speaking of the Lions, we have a man that knows a thing or two about the Detroit Lions, uh, the ups and downs, and uh, and the WTF moments of being a Detroit Lions fan. Sean Belegian joins us on the ADG podcast. Sean, it is great to have you back on the ADG podcast, my friend. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate it. We had a lot of fun the last time, so I'm, I'm more than happy to be here and talk with you guys. Awesome. We appreciate Great. it. Yes. Speaking of last time, we were talking this. We talked before the draft, and uh, boy, were we were we were definitely wrong on what on what direction the lines were going to go. I I wanted Dwayne Haskins. Obviously, I was wrong about that. And you you Sean, you wanted Jonah Williams from Alabama. I believe that was one of your guys that the Lions may look at. Yeah. You know what? Uh, Bob had a uh, an idea of what he wanted to do, and you know, I think. When you sit back and you look at it, um, I, I know it doesn't, you know, cause people to do the backflips and, and get ex- excited and everything, but that was something that hurt them immensely last year. I mean, they simply put, didn't have anything out of that position. They really didn't. And, and, and to me, guys, it isn't just T- TJ Hawkinson, because you have to remember, I mean, in all likelihood, a rookie is going to struggle. A, a rookie tight end there's so many things going on. It may take a little time for him to get his legs. I really think the one move that really not enough is being talked about is bringing in a good, solid player like Jesse James. I, I mean, I know you guys have followed the league, but to perhaps people that are listening, Jesse James has just been a good player in the National Football League, a good, solid player. And you compare what they have now at that position – to what they had last year. I mean, it is night and day. Yeah, that's true. Uh, with huge improvement if we talk about the tight end position. It's not even close. Not even close. And you know what? They needed, they needed to do that. They really did. I mean, this is – I think this is a team, to me right now, guys, it reminds me a little bit of the 2014 team. And, and, and the reason why I say that is – I think this defensive line is going to be special. I think this front seven as a whole is going to be special. And if you get anything out of this offense, you know, who knows what could happen. And and I, you know, I think looking back to 2014, certainly the strength of that team was the defense and it was led by that front seven. I think it's very comparable to, to what that front seven was. I mean, you can make the argument that this one might even be better, Um, but that team in 2014, to me, the offense just always left you wanting more. I mean, anything you can do to, to get this offense just next level, I'm not saying be prolific. In a perfect world, that would be awesome. But anything to get that offense next level will really help. And, you know, I, I think, again, guys, I think this is a better team than people are giving them credit for. Right. It's, speaking of the offense, obviously Daryl Bevel comes in from Seattle 
and really wants to implement a Seattle Seahawks style of offense. That's why the double tight end with Hawkinson and Jesse James uh, out there and mostly focus on the run. Now, you said that if we can get anything out of this offense, I, I think the Lions are going to be okay. But how much trust and faith do you have in the running game and them be able to protect the quarterback? <clears throat> well, million-dollar question. You know, that's one thing. I, I think that Bob has done a nice job of bringing in some draft picks and some of the shrewd moves. I mean, again, it, it, getting snacks for what he got snacks is is such a – it's it's such an undervalued move. It, it really was. But the one thing that he hasn't been able to do, and, and he's worked a couple off seasons in a row, is to get that offensive line clicking. And right, right. there was a lot of rumor and speculation that, that Frank Ragnow was eventually going to end up back at center. Here he is. So this is really the third attempt to get this offensive line to where they want it to be. Um, I think Frank moving back at center is is huge. Uh, you know, talking to some guys that I know that that are scouts, they felt all along that he might be better suited, you know, at that position and, and therefore being the anchor for the rest of the line. You know, I'm going to do the same thing that we were just talking about with the tight ends. And the Zach Zenner move aside, because I was surprised at that. Well, I don't put Zach Zenner perhaps on the pedestal that, that some other fans do. I think Zach Zenner is a guy that showed he could play in this league. But with that being said, I, I think if you compare this – this unit this year to what you had last year, I don't think there's any comparison, guys. I really don't. You know, we're going to work under the assumption that carry on will be healthy for more than we saw last year. And we'll hope that that's the case. C.J. Anderson is undoubtedly a, an upgrade from LeGarrett Blunt. Look, LeGarrett Blunt was was a good guy. Um, I, I, I can't say enough things about him. He was, a, he was a really good dude. But I think it became apparent, apparent to a lot of people last year, and I don't know if you guys felt the same way, that, you know, he was one step closer to retirement. So you have that, and, and then obviously you, you add what, what James Williams brings to the table and what Ty Washington, the excitement that he brings to the table. I think you have a much better unit. But all of that is fine and dandy if you can finally find the recipe to make this offensive line uh, do what you want this offensive line to do. Exactly. Now, the three of us agree that on paper, as fans and what we read and what we know, on paper, this team improved greatly to compare it to last year. But let's look at it from, or what do you think, looking at it from a typical fan's point of view where they just watched the three preseason games. <laughs> Mind you, yeah, I know, I know. And they saw the results, they saw the yeah. play, and they saw all the nonsense that comes with preseason. And we know on paper what they're going to be like or they should be like. But as a typical fan might look at it and say, you know what? 0-3 in the preseason, I hate to say it, same old Lions. Well, no, I, and I can understand that. Look, I mean, the Lions don't have a credit line where a, a, a lot of people in mass are going to throw uh, their hope and trust and faith in, into what they're doing. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. Uh, you know, all you can do – is is reason with people and i think a lot of times people say well you're making a mistake when you're talking about the lions of reason they don't exactly go hand in hand right. look has it been pretty nope absolutely not it has not it has not been pretty there's no doubt about that um but i think what we're seeing before our eyes guys and i know somebody's going to hear this and think that i'm making excuses all i'm going to do is ask you to look around the rest of the league guys aren't going anymore you know, there are more people out there like Sean McVay that are saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to put a, a lot into this. There's a movement afoot, coincidentally, to try to cut some of the exhibition games as well. I'm sure you guys saw the piece. Jerry Jones was talking about it yesterday, and he said, well, I'm not necessarily for it. There seems to be a lot of movement and a lot of owners that want to limit this. I know the coaches do. I mean, in one regard – it's good to take a look and, and, you know, observe, you know, what perhaps some depth pieces are going to be. And in the Lions case, perhaps who your number four and number five receiver are going to end up being, because I still think that's up in the air and, and in play in a certain regard. Um, but listen, I think you're not going to show a lot during the regular season. I saw a quote last week, uh, Daniel Jeremiah asked a general manager, and, and of course he was unnamed, you know, what, what do you think of the game planning that goes into 
um, these exhibition games. And the general manager said, it's pretty close to the Pro Bowl level. So if that doesn't <laughs> tell people all they need to know, yeah, uh, and I don't know about you goals. guys, I haven't watched a Pro Bowl in years. I, I mean, no, it's just like, no, 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 thank you. I'm not interested. So I, I think the dirty little secret is out that you just don't put a lot into this. And I think sometimes people have short memories. I mean, we've seen teams go 0 and 4 that have, you know, uh, gone very deep. We've seen teams go 4 and 0 that didn't win a game. So, um, you know, I, I think the dirty little secrets out, and they're they're just not showing a lot right now. No, absolutely, absolutely. I and I, and Sean, to your point, I think more teams get more uh, a more of a valuation of what their team is and what certain players can do from uh, uh, um, joint practices against another team. Because we see that a lot when the Patriots came in and, and when the Houston Texans came in. Coaches and players that one-on-one -on -one battles, it's more telling against uh, – it's more telling than in an actual preseason game. No question. And, and that's why you're seeing more teams do that, you know. Yeah. And teams teams really uh, seem to enjoy that. The Lions did it a couple of times. You're seeing teams all around the league doing that. I think you're getting more out of that than you are these games. But, I mean, the most useless game is tomorrow night. I mean, it is. Oh. I mean, it's absolutely oh. useless. That game is – you're not going to see a darn thing. There aren't going to be any starters out there. You know, um, again, I don't want to be disrespectful of the guys that are still potentially fighting for jobs, but – if you put anything, and I mean anything, into what transpires in Cleveland tomorrow, I, I think you're out of your mind. Yeah. That's true. I, yeah, I, you can't I, watch I, the fourth game and expect anything to come up, except anything. guys putting their themselves on film. Ex exactly. It, it, it may be in like an audition piece for other players that they probably know that they're going to get cut for other teams to take a look at. But that's about it. Right. And since you mentioned the GM, Two-piece two piece question for you, Sean, and I really need your opinion on this. One, Michael Lombardi, and two, uh, the the spreading rumors of and the, the attitude where the Lions are going to go 3 and 13. So that's a two-part yeah. two question. I don't, I don't get it. I, I really – I'm not trying to be funny. I – I've always felt, and, and if you guys listen to me back in the day, at least I'm consistent about this. I think a lot of times the national media isn't close enough to see what's going on here. And, and what I mean by that, let me, let me draw a comparison. I remember during the Millen era, and, and I'm sure you guys will remember this, uh -huh. people were fawning over what Matt Millen was doing and his draft grades and everything. And I had somebody, I'm not going to say who it was, but I had somebody – that I know in, a, in another market. And, and he said, what's, what's up with you people in Detroit? You're, you're, you're so negative. And after we had a conversation and I basically let him in on the lion's history, you know, and I did the whole, I don't think you get it. They only have a playoff when he goes, that's not true. And I was like, no, <laughs> yes. up. And it's amazing. I don't think a lot of people realize that there's a playoff when in the Super Bowl era. And then, you know, I talked about, I, I said, you know, I, I hope I don't come across as snobby when I say this, you're not here. You don't see this up close and personal. You don't see the dysfunction. They don't you understand. don't hear the stories and, and things like that. So conversely, you know, and I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, but I think you you look at what transpired last year, and, and I think maybe you're you're only scratching the surface of things because to me, I think when you see what he did to his defensive line, what he did to the receiving core, what he did to the running backs, you know. Adding a guy like Hawkinson, um, Talani, hey, like everybody else, full disclosure, I went, huh, when yeah. he was drafted. I, re I really did. But now you you get it. You see him out there. And, and the guys that have been out to practice and the guys that have been following this a lot longer and a lot closer than I have are all going, okay, I get it. He fits what they want to do. I don't understand how somebody can come to a conclusion like that. Heck, I, I have people that, that are listeners and people that I – you know, commiserate with on a daily basis that are saying, I don't see how they're improved. So I guess we're just, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a, at a at an impasse or something. I, I don't know how to explain it because to me, it's plain as day, but we can talk all we want. And this franchise, uh, unfortunately, does not have, again, a lot of credit where people are going to buy into what they're doing. They're going to have to see it. And I totally understand that. I just think with all due respect to people that do this nationally, I think sometimes they merely scratch the surface. 
Oh yeah. Especially if they have so many teams to cover, you know, yeah, they, they'll give you their grades on Detroit, but they really won't dive in deep as, you know, someone locally like you or, 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 or any local, uh, TV affiliate or, or you guys station. as well. I mean, you, you guys, oh, yeah. know their stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, to me, like, I, I always joke about this. Google is your friend. Use Google. Yes. You, you can read about things. You can see the moves that they're making. You can, you can see things coming together and, and you can, you can, you know, uh, make an opinion as such from there. You don't have to, you know, listen to you guys or listen to me or listen to o- O'Hara or, or whomever it may be. But I, when I hear people say things like that, I'm like, are you paying attention to what they've done this off season? Exactly. Right. I, and that goes out, out there and it's on the major networks and people pick it up and then we have to talk about it. And it's like, they don't even give you a combination of how they come up with these numbers. And then recently, even they go into trashing the team when that isn't even the discussion locally, you know, like we're not, we're, well, we're very cynical about our team, but we don't trash them to this degree. No, I agree. You know what? It's interesting because I think um, this this has the look of being right now a, a, a nine and seven team, kind of like what they were the previous couple of years before last year. You know, and and a lot went into six and ten last year. You know, you can say rookie coach, you can say the injuries, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm a firm believer, and you are what your record indicates. But you know, I had this conversation with some guys on Twitter a few weeks back. They were mystified i mean mystified as to how i could think that they were going to go nine and seven and i said guys they went nine and seven the two previous years you know i mean not only are we talking about the areas where in my mind they clearly improved but this was a nine and seven team anyway before you know a slew of injuries started so in the national football league we've seen this for a few years now it's not like the league where we grew up teams go up and down there's that nfl elevator and teams go up and down and this might be the Lions' turn to, to, to go up uh, two or three floors, if you will, in terms of wins. Right. Yeah, I think we're all ready for the playoffs. We're ready. <laughs> we're just uh, we, listen, we were having, I'm not joking. We were having a conversation about that um, before the game last week. It was, uh, you know, Dan Miller and Lomas and, and Steve Courtney and myself. And we were trying to envision while we were sitting in Ford Field, we were trying to envision what it would be like from that vantage point up in the booth um, to look out and see a packed house in the second week of January, you know, hosting a playoff game, much like the Bears did last year, you know, against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I made the crack. I said, well, the difference being our kicker would go out there and bang the kicker that won the, <laughs> and bang the, kicker that won the game. Um, it, exactly. it, it, really, it is, it's unfathomable. It's crazy that, that they haven't been able to have a game at Ford Field yet in playoff time. Oh. It, it, it's gonna like when once that happens, even it, even if they do, let's say host a playoff game, they're gonna burn that city down. Either way, win or lose, if they're if they're hosting a playoff game, it's gonna be a great atmosphere if they ever get to. Hope, hope, hopefully, they get to that. But Sean, one thing I want to ask you is that, and I know that they put a lot of investment into the defense this year, and their defense looks great. My biggest thing is that. They actually did something that I've never seen them do in a long, long, long time. And you could correct me if I'm wrong here, is that when when the Packers released Mike Daniels, the Lions actually scooped him up. They actually got a productive player that wasn't past his prime. They didn't have to overpay him to have him come here. This guy, he's a pro bowler, and they scooped him up. It, like, why haven't they been doing this years ago? Obviously, different regimes and different management, but I, I want to see more of that. If, if a pro bowl caliber player is available on the market, I want to see the Lions be in the hunt for these players. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, were you in the same room with Lomas and I when, when that move came down? I, I'm not joking. Seriously. We were at WJR when that move came down, and we looked at each other like, you know, huh? And, and the thing that I said to Lomas, I said, hey, Lo, no disrespect, but I'm used to watching other teams make these moves. Yes. You know, I'm used to, to watching other teams go, why didn't the Lions do that exactly like you said? So that was our that was kind of our mindset in regards to that. And the interesting thing is, to um, you know, to piggyback on that, you have two guys that in the offseason said – they wanted to come here. Mm-hmm. Now, how often do you hear that? How often do you hear a guy say, this is where I wanted to be? Of course, it's about the money, too. Let's not let's right. not mix words. But, you know, you had Trey Flowers say, 
I wanted to be here. I have that much respect for respect for Matt Patricia. Daniels went over the top in, in talking about his appreciation and, and adoration for, for Coach Patricia. So you're absolutely right. You know, when I when I hear uh, SOL, SOL didn't apply there. That was something very out of the Lions script. Exactly. Exactly. Very true. So, so Sean, we, we want to, we just want to get your thoughts, like going into like, obviously there's going to be a couple players on the bubble. Obviously we talked about Zach center being cut. I, I think some, uh, another team is going to pick him up because I think he has a lot of good qualities that a team would desperate would, would really find useful. But uh, who, who are you, who are your, some of your bubble players that are still like, are they going to make it or are they not going to make it? I uh, guys, I I probably sound like a broken record if you've listened to our broadcast, but I am so intrigued at the wide receiver position because I think the one thing we know we know um, there are going to be three pieces. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, the the horrible injury to Curse, I think, in my mind, that was a guy you could definitely pencil in. One might make the argument you could pen in. So that left two spots open. Now it depends who you talk to. I I know a guy that covers the Lions that's convinced, absolutely convinced that it's going to be Lacey and Fogum. I don't know. I'm not so sure. I I think, again, to remind people that these games aren't totally useless, you know, a play was made late in the game in that game against Buffalo where, you know, Fogum gets stripped and and a defensive back that might be on the bubble for Buffalo, I don't know, uh, made a big-time play. And, you know, maybe that helped – uh, earn him a spot with the Bills, and maybe that hurt Fogum a little bit. I, I, I think when all is said and done, you know, maybe they keep six receivers. I, I'm not sure, but, you know, now it's a situation where you add James Williams and you're scratching your head again asking yourself, well, maybe they're not going to keep six. Maybe it's not going to be, for example, Lacey, Fogum, and, and, and dare I say Brandon Powell. So I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play. And that's why it makes it intriguing because just to reiterate, I talked to one guy and he's convinced that, that it's already a foregone conclusion and it's much to do about nothing. Some of the other guys that have been following this closely aren't so sure about that. So I, I think there are probably four names, maybe three names buying for two spots. So that's, very, very intriguing. I'm not sure if, if a final decision has been made yet. I'm really not sure. And we're going to find out very shortly. Mm-hmm. It, uh, absolutely. Because when it comes down to it, yeah, the majority of the team is pretty much set. There may, they may be a position here uh, or two that might need uh, some uh, a last-minute look with the, with, the fi- with the fourth and final preseason game. Uh, so, so, Sean, do you, we were talking about but before you came on like our lions season prediction and we talked before the draft and now we, we want to get your thoughts on uh, with all the pieces when everything is all said and done after the season where do the lions finish and what's their record you know what i i've been pretty consistent guys i think i think this is a nine and seven team and and i know that doesn't do much for people and i can understand that um I think if a lot of things go right, the, the, the high end of that, could, could they replicate what twenty what the 2014 Lions did? Some people are going to say hear this and say that I'm crazy. I think they can because this defense is going to be that good. Um, the low end of that is, well, you have a couple injuries and, and maybe you find yourself in the same position you did last year. And then all of a sudden we're talking about the future of, of Bob Quinn and, and Matt Patricia being perhaps on the hot seat and everything. I think when you add it all up, this is a team that's going to be much like the teams that we saw in 2016 and 2017. I think they're going to be buying for a, a playoff spot. I think they're going to be in a position late in the year where they can perhaps earn their way into the playoffs. And I think part of that stems from this division because um, what are the Bears going to do for an encore? Are, are they going to be like the Vikings? I mean, the Vikings have been, to me, the poster child of the NFL elevator. You know, they, they go from seven to 12, back to eight to 13, back to eight. So are, are the Bears going to do that? Because they were very fortunate last year to have an inordinate amount of takeovers. Are they going to be able to replicate that? You know, I know if you're in Chicago land, you're going to sit back and go, well, our offense is only going to be better because Trubisky has, you know, a year under his belt. Uh, the Vikings are an absolute wild card. You just don't know what you're going to get from them. There's no other way to say that. And that leaves the Packers. And I think people know the Packers haven't been good. 
they still have Aaron Rodgers, and, and Aaron Rodgers is still undoubtedly the best quarterback in the division. There's there's no debate about that. So that's what intrigues me. Are, are they going to be in a position to perhaps win this division? I, I think they might. You know, if, if they're in that shouting distance, 10 and 6 might just win this division. So we'll see how it plays out. But I, I think when all is said and done, guys, I'm going to stick with 9 and 7. And, you know, it depends really what the rest of the league is doing because, you know, much like we saw in 16 and 17, in 2016, that's good enough to get you in. In 2017, that's not good enough to get you in. So I think what's frustrating about it is one of the things that Bob Quinn said a couple of years ago that I loved hearing is he didn't want to compare the Lions to the Lions. And it wasn't good enough to be over 500 two years in a row. That wasn't the goal. They have to get better. Well, after saying that, they went 6-10, and 10, and if they follow up with 9-7, and seven, there are going to be a lot of cat calls unless they make the playoff and, God forbid, uh, win a playoff game. But, hey, listen, I think this is going to be a, a much better team than what we saw last year, and, and I'm going to be intrigued to see where it ends myself. Well, Sean, to piggyback off of that and to round up our Lions conversation, I'm looking at the schedule, and looking at the schedule for the Lions – it doesn't seem as daunting as we previously thought, really looking at it. Are some of these teams, like you said, going up and down that elevator? Are the Browns are really going to be that good? Are the Raiders going to be any good? We don't know. And I think um, our first game uh, versus the Cardinals is going to be very, very telling. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I agree. You know, it, it, you know it's interesting. If you look at the NFL, um, it's such a fluid league now. And – uh, things that we thought about teams last year, you know, the Jacksonville Jags, for example, were on the cusp of, 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 you know, I guess knocking off the New England Patriots and being the team. They nearly knocked them off of the playoffs and they, they, they beat them soundly early in the season. And, and then you know how that went. I believe they went 5-11. and 11. So what we think right now isn't going to look like what we think is in October. And that may not look like what we think is in December. And I think that's one of the offshoots of this new National Football League. I mean, that's just something we see year in, year out. Uh, you bring up Arizona. Guys, I'm sure that you know this, but it, for your listeners that may not know this, Arizona's all kind of banged up. Not only do they still have the issues on the offensive line that we saw up close and personal last year, uh, but they have multiple members of their defensive backfield out. They have three different guys out the first few weeks of the year you got to go out there and beat that team, period, end of story. No ifs, ands, or buts. I don't care about the Lions' history in the desert. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. Go out and beat a team that you're supposed to beat um, because you can ill afford to have another one of those starts where not only are, are people on the outside going, here we go again, but that stuff might start to creep in in, in the locker room. You don't want to have any of that. Go out there, set the tempo. I don't care how it happens. Just find a way to beat a team that you should be. Right. A, 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 lot, a lot of people are, are uh, kind of like, I don't know if they if they should trust the the Arizona Cardinals this year because of the whole new coaching and Kyler Murray and everything. But I, I but I I would be remiss if I didn't ask you a couple fantasy questions. Uh, sure. Because so, uh, uh, we have obviously it's fantasy football season, draft season. I know my draft is on Friday, uh, so. I, I know you, you do a lot of the fantasy football picks for uh, the Fox do on your on Lions game day. Who are some of your key sleepers? Let's say running back, because I know running back is a very uh, popular position. Well, it's you know, first of all, it, it's isn't it amazing? I don't know how long you guys have been playing fantasy football. It's amazing what's happened to the running back position. It it really <laughs> is. It's a, oh yeah. It's just I mean they're. They, you just don't know. You you really don't know. Um, I'm going to be a homer. I think Carry on Johnson could be a monster. I think people forget how good he was last year. Yeah, I really do. I I think I think people forget how good he is. That's a guy that maybe around here he might not slip as much if you're perhaps having a draft with without uh, you know people in this area. But I, I really I, I like Carry on Johnson this year. You know that's that's a guy that probably around here he might go a little bit earlier than than people think. So uh, that's going to be interesting. I'm going to be intrigued, especially now with the Lamar Miller situation, to see yes, what yeah. Duke Johnson does. Um, you know, Duke Johnson, especially if you're in a PPR, Duke Johnson certainly is, has had his fair share of um, uh, success in that regard. But now, uh, you know, he's going he's gonna to be asked – 
to do a little bit more. And, and I think that's uh, going to be very, very, very interesting to see how that happens. So, yeah, you know, that's that's the thing. Half of it right now, guys, to me is how on earth are you going to get how on earth are you going to get these guys um, going? You know, the, the, the later round picks, you know, catching lightning in a bottle like Jordan Howard, like Jordan Howard is a guy that, you know, was a good, solid player. How is he going to fit in with the Philadelphia Eagles? So th- those are the questions that I have, because. Unfortunately, uh, with with the running back position now, as you know, in this in this shared committee society that we live in, so much of it, you know, has to do with catching lightning in a bottle and making sure you get the guy with perhaps the heavy side of that running back committee. I mean, San Francisco is an interesting situation to watch as well. You know, um, Matt showed a lot of flashes last year, and when given the opportunity, is 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 he going to be able? Uh, to have some of that. So that's the frustrating thing for me about the running back position is, you know, okay, well, let's say you go run out and and you grab, for example, uh, Jordan Howard. Okay. Well, what does this say about Miles Sanders? What does this say uh, about um, usage and and how they decide to use their running backs there? So to me, guys, this is why I, I always used to say, you have to put a premium on running back you really have to put a premium on running back now. You want a guy that you know is going to get looks and is going to get a lot of looks. And uh, that's what's intriguing about this now. And that's what makes guys like Alvin Kamara and Barkley and and, and Zeke and McCaffrey and James Conner. That's what makes guys like that so inviting is because you know they're going to get looks and get a lot of looks. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of those high high numbers, uh, you mentioned uh, Zeke with all the the contract holdouts. Him, Melvin Gordon. Is it even worth it taking a chance on these guys, or or you just have to take a chance on these guys? Obviously, in a later round, or do you get them early? Well, you know what? I it, it depends. I think not to be a cop out here. I think a lot depends on have you dealt with it before? Because I'll I'll, I'll give you an example. I was a guy, I drafted Le'Veon Bell in the second round in one league last year, and I traded for him about halfway through the season in my other league last year. I don't want to do that again. I just, on a personal level, I don't want to do that again. Now, if you haven't been burned in the past, maybe you'd be more apt to do that. Look, if you're taking Zeke Elliott, you're going to get a guy that when all is said and done, you'd be drop dead shock if he wasn't out of the top five of fantasy backs. The question is, when does he come in? And, and the Melvin Gordon situation to me sounds even more frightening. Like that's a dig the heels in Le'Veon Bell type of situation. You know, now that I say that, maybe they both sign tomorrow, but I really, I, I really think it's a player's choice. If you've been burned before, you you let that maybe be some other guy's trouble. Now, don't get me wrong, if it's the fourth round. And and they're still out there. I'm I'm going to do it again. Make no mistake about that. I will. <laughs> it depends when it, it, it is in the draft. Obviously, my guess is they're not going to go that far in a draft. I just if somebody's going to take a chance on it, and you know if if it works for that guy, they're going to feel like a million bucks. I mean, I'm telling you, in both my leagues last year, if I take Le'Veon Bell, the chances of winning both my leagues last year would have been astronomical. It didn't happen, and. I simply made the playoffs in, in both leagues. So, um, you know, that that's that's the risk that you have to take. But I think you also know the high w- reward that's in play as well. Exactly. And 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 it, like you said, it's finding those late round sleepers, those diamonds in the rough that can lead you to a, a league championship is it, it, that's half the battle right there. Uh, yeah. You know who the big studs are. You know who who are your workhorses and your cowbells there. But it's finding those little guys that are just peaked at the right time. And, you know, and it makes you look like a genius. Yep, that's exactly it. And, you know, I've always been so many guys. You, you probably heard me say this 10,000 times. I've always been somebody I wait on my quarterback. I, I I just do. Now, again, don't get me wrong. It's not a hard and fast rule. If I'm drafting at nine overall and it's a quarterback friendly league and Patrick Mahomes is staring at me, I, I, I might take Patrick Mahomes at that point in, in time. But you know, I look at a guy like Phillip Rivers. I mean, Phillip Rivers is a guy that, that I can't tell you how often I'm sitting there in a draft and I'm like, 
wow, Philip Rivers is still on the board. And I take <laughs> Philip Rivers in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. And Philip Rivers has been a model of consistency in regards to what he does over the course of the season. I think anybody that's owned him kind of gets frustrated because every now and again he mix in those stinkers. But the finished product and the numbers that he put up, it's been pretty consistent for a long time now. So there's always guys like that. For whatever reason, they tend to drop in a, gra- in a draft. And you find a guy like that, much like we were talking about with the running backs. Boy, oh, boy, makes all the difference in the world to a team. Exactly. <laughs> When it comes when it comes down to this, this will be my last fantasy question for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, when it comes down to it, like rookies, which rookies should people be putting their trust and putting their uh, their dollars behind? Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Kyler Murray, but because yeah, there's all of this mystery talk about oh, uh, uh, Kingsbury and his offense and how sneaky good they're going to be, you know, and there there are there there's already talks about him being the next Mahomes, but like running back wise, there's David Mon- Montgomery over over there in Chicago and uh, Miles Sanders in uh, Philadelphia as well. Which one of these uh, running back, Josh Jacobs, is also at, in Oakland? Everyone's all on the Josh Jacobs yep. uh, ba- bandwagon over there in yep. Oakland. But, like, who is going to be the guy the, for the rookie that's going to be carrying the most load? I think you just said his name, but I would also be remiss if I didn't tell you guys. I'm like Bill Parcells. Uh, <laughs> you remember Bill, Bill Parcells hated rookies? I hate yeah. rookies in fantasy football. I, I mean, I, I hate them. Now, again, don't get me wrong. If I'm sitting there at a particular point in time in the draft and and a guy like Josh Jacobs is sitting there, and, and God forbid I already have a couple running backs, you know what? I might stash them. But I, I, that's what I always say. When when you're dealing with a rookie, you, you always have to accept the fact that there's going to be some brilliant moments and there are going to be moments of cluelessness and, and dumb. So that, that's one thing. But I think Josh Jacobs is definitely a guy that you have to look at. You know, that, that Raider team, people forget how good they looked in 2016. I mean, they really did. And Carr uh, blew out the knee late in the season. He hasn't been the same since. The offense hasn't been the same since. But, you know, there are a lot of pieces there. And I think Jacobs is a guy that um, is in all likelihood uh, going to be the benefactor there. And it's interesting because – I was just looking at something today, and I, I know this right off the top of my head. I love looking at the ADPs, like the average draft position, just to see where guys are going. Because much like you, sorry, I'm not having my draft until the exhibition season's over. I'm just exactly. not taking that chance. No way, no how. Not not when I'm uh, spending money. But I saw Josh Jacobs today was listed at 18. I think that's incredible value. You know, there were – carry on was at 15. Josh Jacobs was at 18. I, I'll tell you this much. I would have no problem, you know, grabbing one of the guys before them and then rolling around and in back-to-back rounds taking, say, Carry on Johnson and Josh Jacobs and, and having, say, you know, one of the big names, uh, Nick Chubb, Carry uh, on Johnson and Josh Jacobs as, as, as my running backs. I'd have no problem doing that because if Josh Jacobs doesn't come to fruition, if he's he goes full rookie on you um, – you have insurance with a couple other guys, not to mention who you take behind. If, if carry on Johnson gets banged up and, and look, people are going to talk about that. I think you know that as well as I do. Well, then, you know, you might have a pretty darn good in, insurance policy with Josh Jacobs. So I guess that's the way that I've always approached it. If, if I go out and I, I have guys that I feel comfortable with, then I might take the chance on the rookie. I, I don't ever want to draft a rookie too high because – you know, again, more rookies, more often than not, are going to struggle. They're going to be incons- in- inconsistent. And the guys that are overly inconsistent, I think you guys know single-handedly they can down your fan- fantasy football team. They really can. Because if they hit that wrong week at the wrong time, uh, that's it. Exactly. That, that, that's some great insight for all you fantasy football players out there. That's awesome. Good, good luck on your, fa- your, your fantasy football drafts this week. Hopefully you didn't draft Andrew Luck because that's, that's a bad move. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. So what are you guys thinking for the Lions? I'm intrigued. Uh, well, you, you, I'm kind of in the same boat as you as at nine and seven, but I got a feeling that I think that this is your, like you said, that they, they, they take the elevator ride up just one more step. I think they go 10 and six. I feel they're, they're going to win a couple games that normally – they lose, but I think th- this year I think they they finally seal the deal and get and crack that ten win that ten win mark. 
Yeah, I was looking at the nine and seven earlier in the year when the schedule first came out. But looking at how these teams are kind of sorting themselves out, I'm gonna have to agree with Darren on this one. Ten and six. Go. Oh. I'd love nothing more. I'll tell you what, first beer's on me at the playoff game at home. Okay? All right. There we go. <laughs> that's there we go. No, oh, that's great. Well, Sean, we want to thank you for joining us on the ADG podcast. Make sure you follow Sean on Twitter. He's there. He has some great insight. Also, he's on WJR um, 950 for all your Lions coverage pregame right. and postgame. And he's also on Sportsworks with Dan Miller on Fox 2. And also, he is host of X's and Bros, where you can find that on WD, WDFN 1130, The Fan. So, Sean, thanks again for joining us on the ADG Podcast. Hey, anytime, guys. You know that. Uh, give me a call. I love chatting with you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, thanks, Sean. Sean. We appreciate it. Take care, guys. All right, Darren. Yeah. You know I went to the Queen concert uh, middle yes. of summer. Yes. Find me yeah. somebody to love. Yes. That's right. Right. You know, Adam Lambert? Yeah. So two two notches off my bucket list right there, Queen and Adam Lambert, because I'm a really? big Adam Lambert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam I watched Lambert on your bucket yeah, list. Yeah. I'm that I'm that old because I watched American Idol when he was okay, on the show. Okay, all right, okay. So uh, I, I, you know, I, I would I, I I can respect that. If you were to say like someone like Ruben Stutter, or Clay Aiken, I'm like, really, Jake? Okay, I I I, I would rather have Clay Aiken than <laughs> Ruben Stutter when I remember the season two of American <laughs> Idol, and uh, that was a travesty. But I know. I'm just saying Clay Aiken went to sell 2 million uh, album copies of his first CD and Ruben Stutter got to <laughs> like 250,000. I'm just saying. But like, but anyway, that was my beef with American Idol. I'm done. Uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> it's, it, it's actually, it's best if you didn't win American Idol. You would have more of a so, successful career. I know, like Daughtry. Daughtry, Carrie Underwood, Jennifer Carrie Hudson. Underwood. That's right. There you go. I know. Okay. Anyway, let's Anyways. get back to this. Yeah, <laughs> Queen. Talk about music. Adam Lambert. Queen Adam Lambert. And yes. why, why, why are we leading in with my concert to um, Queen. I, I, with Queen and Adam Lambert? Because that's where I found our next uh, music artist for this week. Oh, great. I'm, okay, so got to Detroit early, Little Caesars Arena for the first time. I've never been. So I'm like, well, let's check this place out. And let's get some food because they have restaurants attached to this place. I actually, you know, Honestly, like Little Caesar Arena, LCA, really nice. Uh, so it was a nice venue. Good seats. I had good seats. All the seats seemed to be good, except the really high ones, which just looked really steep. I'm like, right. fuck that. I'm not paying for that shit. <laughs> but no, it was, it was a great concert, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But so I went to Kid Rock's restaurant there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, instead of the LCA. Mm -hmm. An hour wait. So oh, what am I going to do? I got two and a half hours. The concert starts. Hour wait for food. Right. Okay, let's let's wait. Let's wait for food. Let's wait for a table. So we're just going to hang out near the like waiting area and, um, you know, see what happens. About 20 minutes into waiting, a live band starts playing. Nice. I'm like, oh, man, these guys sound good. They did some covers and stuff. Right. I heard some Johnny Cash in there, like their own version of it. like, Man, these guys are good. Yeah. This is a trio. I'm like, man, I, I gotta get a better, better shot of this because these guys sound pretty good. So I walked around and like got their name. I'm like, wow, these guys are pretty good. They're like they sound really good. Mm -hmm. They sound like, like they have a like that Detroit rock vibe. I'm like, perfect. Right, right. Got their name. Hit them up on Instagram. As I was there, I took a picture. I'm like, you guys are awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, ADG podcast because I think I tagged it off of our page. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Really good show. I'm like, I'm enjoying this while waiting for the other concert. It's mm -hmm. perfect. Mind you, Kid Rock's restaurant, pretty good, mm -hmm. food-wise. What, 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 what did you have? What did I have? I had uh, Cajun cauliflower, Ooh. which was pretty good. Uh, what the hell did I have? I had the Reuben. You can't go wrong with the Reuben. Oh, Reuben's are great. Yeah, but that's what I had. But it was good. So the band stopped playing about uh, right at the beginning of my meal. So I had lots of time to like, you know, go through my phone and start adding them everywhere. Just because I really like appreciated uh, what they were doing. Right. But they were great. So went to the concert. Concert was amazing. Definitely in my top five ever. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. It was just insane. <laughs> insane on every level. Great music, obviously. Queen. Well, uh, yeah. Great performances. <laughs> yeah. Tom Lambert's amazing. Um, obviously, over the top, which is great. He's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and I have a side story I'll save for next week or the week after about what ha- actually happened around my seating area. Oh, yeah, I have yes. stories from the concert. We'll save Those that for now. Uh, right yeah. So I get home and I'm like, man, this band. Let's see what else they got. So I I found this band that I listened that I heard live, and I'm like, oh, I'll send them an email, yeah. send them a message from our Instagram, like we always do. That's right. These guys replied right away. They before I even got out of the concert, they were already like, yeah, Instagram replied, like, oh, cool, thanks for checking us out. I'm like, yeah. man, these guys are good. Yeah. And then they sent me, I told them I was, I want to play them on the pod because we love music. And it's especially this is Detroit local. So I'm like, all right, this is really great. Right. I'm like, send me something and then we'll put you guys on the show. Within uh, not even half a day, I already had the logo, I already had their, their single. And that's what we're going to play today. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to play their single. But before I do that, I'm going to tell you about the band. The band is Rolling Blue. And they have, to, to me, I'm a music guy. It's like, um, and I hate comparing bands. I'm not even going to say other bands' names. But it's right. like a southern Detroit type, like southern with, mixed with Detroit, Detroit rock vibe. They're great. And um, if you like rock, and if you like any version of rock, like late seventies especially, mm-hmm. rock, you're gonna love this song. And I I sent you the link earlier. Yep. And yeah, loved it. Their single is called "Like the Breeze," and this is "Rolling Blue," "Like the Breeze" right here on the AG Podcast. <laughs> Like the breeze, we're gonna 
share this on our Facebook page. Go give some likes. Go yeah. give some comments. Go check them out. Great. Check them out. Yeah. Tell them ADG sent you. There you go. Yeah. And uh, hey, you know what? We got great music, especially if it was this type of genre. Hey, even better. Exactly. You know, it, like we've done a little bit of everything that we, uh, when it comes to like promoting music, we had rap rock hip-hop country you know all yeah, what better way to start off season two than with some rock exactly right it's gonna be a rocky kind of season a good kind of rocky good so, kind of rocky season. that's right <laughs> so that's great uh, so there you go Our that's, that's awesome stuff. that's great uh so jake i know it's been a while since we had one of these but it's time for the top five my friend <laughs> top five top five season two all right Season two. So this kind of goes with what we're going to talk about after. But I have um, top five classic horror movies of all time. Ooh. And l- let me see where you and I compare to what this list says. <laughs> okay. Because we might have some disagreements with this list. Uh, or we might really actually agree with it. But, like it's fun, it, but it's fun when we disagree, though, Jake. Exactly. That's what I mean. Now, let's see where we stand. Okay, number five. Okay. Yeah. Village of the Damned. Oof. I've never seen it. <sighs> really? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not a big horror guy, so this is probably not the best category okay. for me. It, it's just, it's about creepy kids. Oh, okay. And it's just, it's a, it's a good movie. Is, it's is, is, that, is that like the Children of the Corn? Similar, field? but this was way back when. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is 1960. Okay, this one you might know. Number right. four. Yeah. Psycho. Yes. Original. Yeah. The original black and white version. Yes. yes. Obviously, he has that iconic scene of the girl in the shower and the guy with the, the, the knife. That's right. Yeah, that's good. I like that as number four. That's good. That's classic. Yeah. Number three is probably my number one. Hmm. Night of the Living Dead, the original. Ooh. I like the I like the remake better. Yeah, yeah. But this, is, this this is going into my genre here. That's this number three. That's all you. That's it. Yeah, Night of the Living Dead. Obviously, it's been remade. A, how many times has it been remade? Just the one. Night of the Living Dead once. Yeah. But there's been uh, Night of the Living Dead two, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the oh, Dead. I gotcha. Everybody's Sean... dead. Like a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. Shaun, and... Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. It's been it's it's been all over the place, but the original one is great. It is great. I like the remake because it goes very close with the original. Oh yeah, no, the remake was in the eighties, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Right, number two, yeah. number two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ooh, yeah, it's inspired by a true story, so that was what makes it like get up to number two. Yeah, but this is this is it's creepy. It's creepy. It, like, like when you talk about horror movies, I know there's different genres of horror movies. There's yes. slashers, there's gore, yes. you know, and there's there's thrillers, there's all those different kinds. And like, I I, I don't know if it, it would be considered a horror movie, but the last like, I guess it's a thriller uh, movie was uh, Get Out. I thought Get Out was. Yeah, I, I think I would put that in here. Would you? Uh, on on a on a top horror movies list because if you really think about it yeah it was more of a horror movie than a thriller right because of what you know the whole plot of that movie but right. number one the exorcist oh yes the and classic it's, yeah exactly that it does people off immediately because nobody was expecting this movie to do what it did mm-hmm. just get the shit out of you <laughs> well that's what it was supposed to do right it's just Pieces. Yeah, green pea soup uh, never looks so appetizing, I must say. No, not at all. <laughs> but that, so there that you go. Is, that is, that's a pretty good, horrifying top five there, Jake. Right. And all those are all the classics all in the 60s, 70s. And I'm sure uh, we'll come up sometime this season of newer version of our own top five or something like that. Because yeah. I'm sure we have favorites different genres the, yeah it, and people are, are really pushing the envelope now when it comes to horror genre in this day and age because of 
I, I think it was that one movie that they got pulled from theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I, I, I forget the, where they like hunt other people, where they were hunting other oh, people. Yeah, that, I, that was I pulled out of theaters for the political reasons. Yeah, but, so like movies like The Purge, for example. Yeah, you know, yeah, like that. The yeah, Purge, it's, it's, like, it's I, I, yeah, like The Purge. I thought the original Purge was great. You yes, know, it was, I agree it was with different. You on that. But they, you know, they just keep making uh, sequels like, and making prequels. It worse. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree, hundred percent. The first Purge was awesome. Second one was okay. After that, I they didn't, they didn't care. Exactly, but, Darren. Since we're here, yes. Why don't you break out the new segment for the people? Well, I was I was giving this a lot of thought, and I was thinking, you know, there's always like a new trailer being released every so often. I follow this great uh, Twitter account called uh, uh, Lights Camera Pod, and it's 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 a movie podcast that. Uh, it's actually the guys from Barstool Sports. They do a movie podcast. They do a great job of breaking down all the latest and, and uh, newest uh, trailers that come out. They always are the first to post on it uh, uh, new trailers for, for upcoming movies. And so I gave me the, the idea. How about we do a segment called Rate, Rate This Trailer? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going pl- we're gonna to play a trailer. We watch a trailer. And then me and Jake, just based on the trailer alone, we'll, we'll give it a, a rating, like one, one out of ten. Ten, obviously, we're excited. We're going to go see it. One, don't go see it. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your time on it. So there's so many movies coming out uh, towards the end of this year and next year. So we have plenty, plenty of trailers to, um, to review. So I figured that I had one in mind that just so happened that the trailer came out, the, the full trailer came out today. And it's the Joker. Uh, it's just called, it's a movie called Joker. It's called, it's starring uh, Joaquin Phoenix playing the, the, the legendary Batman villain uh, character, uh, Joker. And Jake, uh, I'm sure you've saw, you saw the trailer. Your yes, first, we, your, yes. your first initial uh, impressions of the trailer. Well, I like that it was a full trailer because yeah. I, I yeah. wanted more. I wanted more from the, the teaser exactly. trailers that we have before. It, it, I'm sorry, just a little sidebar. We're, yeah. we're only going to do full trailers, not teaser trailers where yeah, you only full, get 30 full. seconds, 45 seconds of like a scene that doesn't mean anything or, exactly. or, or doesn't tell you anything. Full trailers, two minutes plus. But anyways, and I'm loving this. Se- and I love this segment. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and I did watch today because it came out only like five hours ago. Yeah. It, it really gives you like I had doubts about this movie, and but looking at the trailer, I I, I think it's gonna go in the direction where we're actually going to like what's gonna happen. Yeah, because if you thought this is gonna be in a universe where gonna be superheroes flying around and shit, yes. no, this is a psychological, creepy, exactly creepy, creepy, creepy movie. Mm-hmm. Where it's just gonna hit you on the all the wrong buttons in your head yeah um, what a psychopath goes through and becomes and at the trailer i think had a really good camera shots mm-hmm. had a really type of dark setting and, and then, you know walking phoenix phoenix can act and he's just pulling out all the stops in this movie and it it's it, it looks really good it does uh, being that this movie is directed by todd phillips so todd phillips has done everything like movie genre wise from like the hangover to like more serious movies like this so for him to put his own spin on it i thought it was great and i was very surprised if you watch the trailer that uh, robert de niro's in this movie yes and you know obviously legend like robert de niro you know he obviously there's something to it that uh, you know he doesn't he doesn't do any like movies just willy-nilly you know obviously there the script had to be great and obviously working with joaquin phoenix is something that you just don't pass up. That's but true. I, yeah, but like, but like showing him like all the struggles that he goes through. He just he just wanted to make people laugh. He just wanted people to be happy around him, and then people just gave him no respect. And just you know, he goes to therapy in, in, in the trailer. You know, he's just trying to like make himself better. But like people are just telling him like, like why why are you even bothering? You know, it's just not going to work. Exactly. You know, I think the movies. 
Yeah, I think the whole thing's going to be a total mind fuck for all of us who are going to watch it. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to take us on an emotional roller coaster of, wow, this, this is messed up. Exactly. All of this is messed up. Because, again, it's a different version of the Joker. Mm-hmm. And, again, Walking Joaqu- Phoenix looks like a totally different person. Oh, yeah. The, 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 like one, one part where you see him like putting on uh, the painting his face and just really like really soaking up this this person that he's become, you know, and then mm-hmm. he be, and then he has his bunch of followers and then he start he, he starts to recognize that he's actually the leader of 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 this movement, you know, that where he says like that they're all jokers. You know, I don't know if it's if, if this is the kind of, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what kind of era this is take this is supposed to take it's place. It's a different in. universe. It's a it, different it, it, uh, it DC looks, universe. But like even like the setting, on like, it could be like a ninety uh, a nineties uh, setting. I think so. In, yeah. In the trailer. Yeah. I, the, just looking at the vehicles and yeah. the way that they're uh, the way that they look in the subway. So. Yeah, obviously there's so many different takes on the Joker, from Jared Leto's uh, uh, version of the Joker to Heath Ledger's uh, iconic role in, in The Dark Knight, which I still think is one of the best Joker performances ever, all the way back to the first one when it comes to Jack Nicholson and uh, Michael Keaton in the first Batman movie. Right. Right. Well, okay. Well, then, oh, with all that, um, keep you my uh, rating on it then. Yes. So, just from the trailer itself, mm-hmm. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. That's... With a kicker. With a kicker. Okay. All with right. a kicker. Because 8 out of 10, I'm, I'm already going to go see it. Right yeah. There. Um, so. Why it's not 10 out of 10? Because I don't know what the actual s- side stories might be with this. I saw there's a love story in there, which already turns me a little like, really? <laughs> but... Especially with the way he, uh, what he's in and what he does, but anyway, all right, all right. that, that um, kind of notched two pegs down on mine. But for Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix himself, yeah, it's just coming out not too long from now, right? Uh, October comes out. October, right? So that's yeah. perfect time. That's might be a little too early for Oscar buzz, uh, but it might be skipped because of what kind of movie it is well we look at oscars uh, are in march right i believe i think that's when they're that's when the ceremony is yeah so. but all the all the all the stupid movies nobody sees come out in like end of december beginning of january yeah yeah <laughs> but there's I, I i think uh just to just to go off on a little sidebar here that there are a lot of i think there's going to be a lot of big name actors contending for the oscar this year i'm just saying in the future, if if you're if you're looking for nominees for Oscars, I I got right now I got three in mind. It's gonna be Joaquin Phoenix. I think he's gonna get a nod for this. I, I hope just, so. It's something special about him doing this. Him, uh, Tom Hanks for Mister Rogers Neighborhood. Oh wow! I, I think something like that, and of course Leonardo DiCaprio in Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Those are those are my three that I think that deserve Oscar uh, Oscar uh, nominations. Well, it's on record, so we'll see what happens. There you go. That's right. Right. So what's uh, your rating so, there? So you say eight. I say yeah. just based on this different take on it. You know, it's they're going completely out of the box on this one. You know, there's no Batman involved. It's just Joker. It's just how this man got from being a, a happy-go-lucky guy trying to make it as an entertainer to being brainwashed or just by all these people that told him that he can't do it to what everyone knows Joker is nowadays. I like, I'm going to give this an 8.5. Wow. Very nice. Out of 10. Yes. And and, and just so you know, we're allowed to do point systems. So if you, if you're not too sure, you get 8.2, but I'm going to go 8.5. 8.7521. From, from (laughs) Russian judge, (laughs) 8.7. Yes, that's great. Cool. That's great. Okay, so we're both gonna go see it. That's great. Yo, absolutely, uh, definitely. And then we'll, we'll we'll review it after we see it. Yeah, next week, uh, and who knows? I may not have a a trailer that I that I don't uh, that, that I can't review. If Jake doesn't have one, if you have a trailer, send us. 
give yeah. us a, a, get, let us know which trailer you want us to review and we'll review it we'll, we'll, we'll facebook, give you our thoughts twitter. Just facebook twitter adg podcast hit us up we'll we'll post uh we'll post the trailer i think actually i did post the trailer on uh, our facebook page yes um, yes you did uh, so, so it's on our Facebook page. Check out the trailers. Give us your rating on the jo- on Joker, uh, the full trailer, and uh, tell us if if it's uh, if if that's a movie that you that you that you're gonna go check out. Love it. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So, from Darren. from that, yes. Yep. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna smoothly segue in season two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this doesn't get any better. Oh. All it's, right. uh, that's the one thing I wish that we worked on a little bit during our off season was our, our transitions to uh, other topics, but that's who eh, we are. Yeah. Eh. yeah. What do you do? I was relaxing. You were relaxing. We were relaxing. Since, we were having a good time. That's right. And then since we're talking about what we did in our off season, yes. we have to have an off season. We can't do this straight. That's, yeah. That's crazy. Talk. No. We, we, we would get sick of each other. Yeah. Exactly. Get sick of everything <laughs> else to talk about. You can only talk about measly baseball and lions uh, so can't much talk about the tigers for two and a half months during the summer no thank you oh so yeah. here's here's um mm. something uh you guys heard me i went to the concert this summer so yes. this is what consisted my break consisted of relaxing there went to a concert went away went down to florida for a week and I, with that i'll have some stories with the next coming weeks i have a Ongoing segment starting next week of <laughs> Florida Adventures. <laughs> yeah, it's it's shit I saw on the way. <laughs> and while there. Oh, you know, there's, there's there's a lot of things that happen that are questionable and we will discuss them. Excellent. That's in the next upcoming weeks. But um, I know I know I, I, I went away a couple of times. Yes. And then I went up to um Pobermore. I don't know, I think I shared I went to the glass bottom glass bottom tours. Oh, uh, lovely! With, yeah, with um, with the fam, those are pretty cool. Love that place. The place is great. A little, That's little too crowded for me. Tell you that right now. Oh, really? Not yeah, a little too crowded now. No, Used to be nice. Big crowds. Crowded. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of big crowds. <laughs> but, <laughs> but couple couple things I noticed yeah. is human behavior, and that's what our my my segment is going to consist of. Besides rants. Is human behavior of wherever I've been because there's so many variety of people I've seen this summer, and I, I'm not a big fan of lots of people. But yeah, we're gonna talk about human behavior and how people behave in, when they're out in public and mm-hmm. traveling and doing things. But we'll get into that. But one trip I wish I did is the one you did is when you went to Vegas this year. Yes, it was just recently. It was a couple weeks ago, a few weeks back. We went to Vegas. Um, it was a uh, it was a fun trip. Just a bunch of the cousins that uh, I've known. I've known my whole life. Uh, one of my one of my cousins get married in September, uh, so we decided to go to Vegas for a bachelor party. You know, just a just you know just a. It wasn't so much a bachelor party. It was just a a, a good trip to to get out and to spend time with one another because because. Me personally, I don't get to see them that much. They they live in Michigan, so I don't you know see them as much as I as I would like to to visit them. But it was great. Uh, we stayed at uh, the D Hotel and Casino on Fremont Street, Old Vegas. If you've how, ever how was been. that? How was the D? It was good. It was a nice place. The rooms were very nice. The the, the scenic views were great. And and you're right there in the middle of everything on Fremont Street. You walk out, and there's a stage to your left and there's bands playing djs playing all day there's people constantly walking up and down uh fremont street and there's so much to do and so much to see there uh so that was great d uh was just wonderful treated us great um also uh, i got to meet uh, meet the owner uh uh, who's who who sits at the end of the bar at the bar yeah yeah he's there he his there's two seats that are always reserved for him and his wife and so we told him where we're from you know he's he loved he loved the fact that uh was from windsor across the across the the border and so that's great he had he had he had family and friends over there in windsor so it's always great to you know 
get some Canadian respect when you're over there. And, and that's the thing about, I noticed about Americans. That's where they had a few, you know, and they, they said like, where are you from? <laughs> oh, oh, Canada. Oh, they love it. Like, oh, Canada. Oh, is it cold up there? Do you guys get running water and all that? It's stuff? nice up there, eh? Hey, how's it going, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah hockey yeah 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 yeah. so no that was great so uh good times there we have i happen to have uh we happen to have uh, like a poolside cabana at the golden nugget which which was great so we had poolside cabana where it was just nice to sit in a nice a a nice heated pool on 104 degree uh temperature day so (laughs) oh good soup (laughs) yes but the cold but the cold beers felt nice going down there so that was always good um yeah and i i must say my this was this was my second trip to vegas uh but the first time i actually won really big Uh, obviously in vegas they they got single game sports betting where you can bet on anything and I, I swear, mean, if you bet on the Lions, I'm gonna hurt. No, you. oh God, no, no, no. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but no, I, I, I wasn't that drunk yet. Okay, um, uh, so uh, I decided to do baseball. Uh, so because baseball was the only thing really going on at the moment. Uh, so I, uh, I understand like the three team parlay. So you, you pick three teams, and they all got to win to to uh, for you to for you to collect your money yeah. so i i decided to do um what is it I, I, yeah so the oakland a the oakland a's were playing the 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 houston astros oakland was at home they're going against justin verlander right oakland big underdogs but i had a hunch so i took i took oakland oakland and i took pittsburgh pirates over the chicago cubs and then my in my third game i picked was your Detroit Tigers over the Tampa Bay Rays. Right wow. there, I figured, ah, I'm not going to win. I, I, I'll be lucky if I win two games out of this, right? <laughs> but it's Vegas, right? So I put 50 bucks down just to see, hey, why not? And it's 50 bucks. It's, it's no big deal, right? You know, if I win, great. If I, if I don't, eh, it's a Tigers. Uh, it, it, no, it's a Tigers. So we go to dinner that night, and I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm checking my phone like after the first course. And that's like, oh, Pittsburgh won. That's nice. That's one. <laughs> and then, and then uh, I looked at I looked at my phone a little bit later. The Tigers won. They beat the Rays two nothing. I'm like, wow. So it all came down to Oakland versus Houston, and it was n- nervous as hell watching this game. Not only was it a close, low scoring game, Jake. It went to 13 innings. And, I, and I'm there. I'm at the bar with my cousins. We're all gathered around this TV. We're, we're between, playing, uh, b- between playing the slots and, you know, and gambling, we're watching, this, we're watching this game. And it's, it's becoming a life experience, you know, that they're up, and then they're down, and then they tie it late. And then they load the bases in the 13th inning. I'm like, oh my god, just end this game, please. And but the but the fun part was that everyone that was around us, people I didn't know, people that my cousins didn't know, they all were starting to clue in, like, hey, this guy's got some money riding on this game. <laughs> so when Oakland hits, Aaron's the rock, sweating at the table. I'm sweating. I'm just like, I didn't, I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> um, and, and so it gets to the 13th inning. They blow the bases. Oakland has it. I think it's like one out, bases loaded. I'm like, oh, my God, just anything. You know, like, come on. This has got to be it. Guy hits a walk-off single. Oakland wins. Place goes crazy. I've never heard a reaction like that to an Oakland A's game other than probably <laughs> being in Oakland ever. So, yeah, and that so, would be like 50 so, so a $50 bet turned into over $1,100 for me. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. So it, that, that was a, so a trip paid for and then some. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So Good. that was that. There's there's other stories from Vegas. Obviously not none that I'm not going to be yeah. telling anyone, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you keep so, those through stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, so like, those, 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 those stay in Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly so that's awesome that was that was the highlight of my summer i guess very nice very nice well it's over because today's the the 28th (laughs) done thanks oakland now go back to being (laughs) oakland exactly awesome good so there's there you go there's a quick recap of what we've done 
over the summer, well, you'll get more insight as the season goes on. Yes. And it'll be a long season, so lots of stuff to cover. Exactly. So, Darren? Yes. Got a little rant. Oh, wow. How I miss these rants. It's and, been too and, long. Yeah, and I mentioned this to you before off the air because yes. it's kind of funny. But it's not funny, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so, you know, we, we it's summertime. And you go out in, into public spaces, and as much as I hate people, I have to go to public spaces. <laughs> I guess I and, have to be nice. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a big guy. I'm a big guy. Mm, I'm 6'3", yeah. over at Cooper. <laughs> He's just a big teddy bear. Right. Exactly. I'm huggable. He's huggable. But, <laughs> but <laughs> if, if you go outside, and it's 100 degrees outside, uh-huh. if you do any form of actual movement... You will be sweating. Right. Anything outside in a crowd, in a mall, in a store, anywhere, you'll be sweating. For Mm. the love of God, there is something called deodorant. (laughs) There is the stuff you roll on your pits, and there's the shit you spray on yourself. Pick one. Uh, The Axe body spray? Pick something. Pick anything. Throw a bar of soap in there. I don't Mm. give a shit. (laughs) <laughs> I really don't want to know what you actually yeah. smell like exactly. ten feet away, ten feet away from you. Right. I don't care where I am if I'm at a tourist attraction, <laughs> and if I'm at the mall. Yeah. I don't want to know that somebody's coming around the corner, and they're not even around the corner yet. <laughs> okay. Right, right. It's, I, I'm, I'm being truthful here. Keep that inside. It <laughs> literally. We can put anything under there. Right. Not necessary. At this day and age, it's 2019. Right. Get some deodorant. I'm there not joking. Here. There, there you go. Now, just I just have a question for you. Like, in this day and age, with people being so blunt and honest, like, do you ever feel compelled to tell uh, someone, hey, you stink? Not you well, as a well, person. You physically stink. Like, it depends on the situation. Like... Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm not allowed to tell people anything, <laughs> just, just whatever situation I'm in. Right. And, and I remove myself from that situation because you should know. <laughs> if you, or you have somebody that should tell you. Right. Or, or, uh, or, Jake, or Jake, they might have a condition. And they can't yeah, right, help. exactly. If, if you have a condition, right, there is a lot of uh, healthy, natural things you can slather on yourself to avoid this. And... I know some people, like very few, but some do have the condition where they, they're just, you know, they just that's just how they are. Mm-hmm. There is a way to avoid that. Okay? <laughs> this many people can't have the condition. Okay? Right. A, a, a small majority of the crowd can't have the same condition. And I know what you're getting at. I'm just saying, if I go into a crowd and half of the crowd smells, <laughs> I can't help you. Yeah, something. especially if you're in like a let's say you're at a con- if, if if you're at a concert and it's like general admission, so you're like shoulder to shoulder with people, yes. right? That's yes. gonna ruin your time at the concert because right. or you're in line in the attraction, you just have no choice because everybody's yeah. just walking in. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> sweating your face off next to somebody who's sweating and smelling it up. There you go. So hopefully, so invest. Hopefully Jake, yeah, hopefully Jake. Uh, you're not around, Jake. If if you don't have deodorant on, uh, please deodorant on because he will tell you, like, hey, yes. bro. Uh, I, if, if I have to, I will. Yeah. I, I don't want to know certain things. That's one of the things I don't want to know. So, if <laughs> or, I have know, to, if I have to layer, yeah, you should also at least a little bit. Or, or Jake, this is what you do. You just carry around a little can of like spray on deodorant and just say like, here, here you go. <laughs> Or, Take, no, I thought you were going to tell me treat them like cats and spray them with a water bottle. No, no, no. <laughs> you walk no. around people. You imagine walking behind somebody who's like spraying them down with a, a thing of wax. Ah, that's better. <laughs> or you know what? Or or you put on or you put some on like on yourself, but you kind of like aim it so it hits them. Right, some subtle spraying. Yeah, very subtle spraying that you just like, like oh, he's, then he's like oh, the guy you know oh, does sorry. Know, how to aim his deodorant can. It's like, no, I know how to use it. You need it. That's right. 
but that's my rant for, for the first episode of the season two. Season. That's great. That's right. All right. So, so no yeah. stinky people. Stinky people, you've been on notice. That's right. That's <laughs> oh, man. That was good. All that was right. Good. That's yeah. great. So that, uh, so let's uh, let's wrap it up by uh, saying that it's a big thanks to Sean Belegian for joining us on the podcast. Always love it when he's here. Make sure you check him out. Uh, uh, WJR, uh, WJR uh, News, Radio, News Radio 950 uh, Lions coverage pregame and postgame show. He's on there. Uh, X's and Bros, the show on 1130 WDFN The Fan. In Detroit, and he's also on SportsWorks with Dan Miller uh, every Sunday night, and he's also on Lions uh, Game Day, you know, uh, doing his fantasy football projections and all that stuff, all that good stuff. So make sure exactly. you check. Exactly. And he graces out. us with uh, an appearance on the EDG with his podcast. knowledge and his appearance, and we thank him for that. Yes. And uh, next week, if uh, we have, uh, I have a good friend that will be joining us on the podcast. Tina Brigley will be that will be here talking about anything relationship wise. She is a relationship expert and guru. So if you have any relationship questions, get them in this week. We'll ask her next week on the podcast. Trust me, it will be one of our better interviews of the of the second season. Even though and, we're and, only we're only one episode in. Yeah. And don't leave me to ask questions because, you know, I can't be serious about any of this. So oh, that, send that, some that, questions that, on Facebook that, for exactly, us. Exactly, and... exactly. So send us questions on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Check us out on, on all those. Just search ADG Podcast for everything related to the show. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, email us, ADGpodcast at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to uh, get get in touch with you or if you have any music do yourself a favor send us your your music at adg podcast at gmail.com and we'll definitely try to promote you guys and any upcoming events that you have uh that, that you have to announce let us know we'll do we'll be more than happy to uh give you guys a shout out exactly that's right that was a good first episode that was a good one. I, a I, good think, one. I, I think if I, it took a year for us to get our uh, to, to get our ducks in a row, but I think we finally nailed one. Yeah. And and maybe maybe next year we'll we'll figure out transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we'll see about that. Yeah, maybe we'll see. All right. Maybe. So for the ADG podcast, I'm Jacob, and I'm Derek, and we are ADG. Bye.